I you misrepresented get myself. away from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. The punch stirred a generation less trusting of traditional media, more open to believing fake news and theories spread on the internet, and revived the moon landing's hoax theories. NASA never realized that we would have something called the internet. It's only now, when all those videos are available, that people can see what the problems are. I think the propagation of so-called fake news, the uh, spread, which is very welcome, of access to the internet, means that we have far more sources than we used to. There is a real crisis in understanding the strength of those sources. People often have some kind of distrust of authority, governments, and so on. Five, four, three, two, one. Liftoff. Liftoff. 50 years on, the feud continues, as a surprising number of people still believe that we never landed on the moon. The question lies at the heart of one of the greatest conspiracy theories of all time, a theory born from an era of global suspicion, political mistrust, and fake news. The whole Apollo program was a complete fabrication. Any idea could have been hoaxed is, quite frankly, insane. But when put to the test, can we unlock the scientific truth and once and for all, put these conspiracy theories to rest? We didn't go to the moon, and that is an established fact. NASA provided all the topographical data they had, all the photographs, all the massive models to Stanley Kubrick, so they could actually fake moon scenes. Could the moon landings actually have been faked by Hollywood director Stanley Kubrick? The history books say otherwise, that Apollo 11 astronaut Edwin Buzz Aldrin spent three days traveling to the moon and was the first to follow Neil Armstrong's historic footsteps. Beautiful view. Is that something? I'm uh, totally in favor of freedom of speech, but I think uh, people need to be responsible when they think about intentionally, for their own benefit, misleading the young people who are the future leaders of our world. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. At the peak of the Apollo program, NASA employed 400,000 people. But was putting a man on the moon so important that the United States government faked it. If so, a legion of NASA employees not only participated in the deception, but they kept the secret from the rest of the world. That was such a seminal event that it wasn't just about the mission itself, but the way that that influenced wider life. You know, people began to think, oh, we can do space travel, we can actually go to other worlds. On July the 16th, 1969, the three Apollo 11 astronauts prepared for liftoff. But while the world eagerly awaited for history to be made, one man was already skeptical. During the 1960s, Bill Casing was the head of technical publications for Rocketdyne, the company that helped manufacture the Apollo rockets. Casing who claimed he had access to some of its top secret documents, questioned the competence of the Apollo project. I really believe that they weren't in the command capsule at launch. They, uh, they did a little bit of a magician act with the astronauts. They went up the elevator, but they came down the elevator. In other words, they did not want to risk the lives of the astronauts in case the Saturn blew up. An explosive claim, which Casing said the CIA tried to silence by making three attempts on his life. Like Casing, Marcus Allen, British publisher of Nexus, a magazine of alternative politics, history and science, also questions NASA's engineering capability at the time of the launches. The problem is the whole Apollo program was a complete fabrication in order to be seen to succeed in the Cold War. The myth of Apollo is what is holding NASA back from future space travel. It's a tragedy. We didn't go the first time, we can't go now. 
We've never been. They lied to us. But if NASA didn't put a man on the moon, it would have had to fake the evidence. And its own visual images have done the most to fuel conspiracy theories. Every photograph taken on the lunar surface is online. 5,771. Some of them are not particularly good. Some are out of focus. Some are light struck. Some just don't show very much of interest. And some of them are very good indeed. And it's the very good ones I question. I do not believe they were taken on the moon. They were taken here on Earth. Conspiracy theorists believe NASA faked all six of the Apollo moon landings and point to these NASA photographs as proof. Some of the most renowned claims suggest that areas lit from behind should be in dark shade, when in fact, they reveal full detail. In others, the shadows don't run parallel. Is this because they were lit by separate sources, suggesting film lighting? Despite being taken in space, no stars are visible in any of the Apollo photographs. Gravity on the moon is one-sixth of that on Earth, but when archive footage is sped up, the astronauts appear to be running at normal speed in Earth's gravity. And with no atmosphere on the moon, why does the flag seem to wave in a breeze? For the purpose of this program, we filmed an experiment on a lunar set built in the Trona Pinnacles in the Californian desert to challenge the hoax theories and put these claims to the test. By testing some of the most famous conspiracy arguments and addressing new evidence, can we put the lunar hoax theories to rest once and for all? If, as the conspiracy theorists claim, NASA faked the Apollo missions, then it also had to fake the photographic evidence. I was trained as a photographer in London back in the 1960s. I was familiar with the camera that was used, the Hasselblad camera, and also with the film that was used, Kodak Ektachrome Transparency Material. So I was familiar with the, the technical side of it. And the more I looked at the photographs, the more I started to doubt whether what we'd been told had happened had actually happened the way we'd been told. Also siding with Marcus, American conspiracy theorist Ralph Rene raised a different technical question. Could the gloves the astronauts wore on their pressurized spacesuits have actually worked on the moon? What I do is I pull a vacuum in this chamber I created and I have a glove inserted inside of it and it was to prove that the flexibility they shown in their suits and gloves are impossible. Right now, I can put my hand in there and I can move it every which way I can grasp, I make a fist, I can lift up, down. But as soon as I throw this switch here, I evacuate the chamber. As air is sucked out of the machine, the vacuum makes it more and more difficult to move the glove. And this glove doesn't want to move. I can't bend it backwards. I can hardly force it down. I mean, how could you pick up small screws and bolts like they've shown them to do, or trigger a little tiny trigger on a camera with the glove doing this? If it seems impossible to operate a camera properly in pressurized gloves, how could these perfect pictures have been taken? Trained aerospace engineer Jay Windley has extensively researched the moon landing conspiracies and was present at the experiment on the moon set to refute these theories. This is a Hasselblad EL500 camera manufactured specially for the lunar missions. Yet attached to the spacesuit via this bayonet, the camera would have a framework surrounding the bottom and rear of the camera, and it would slide down onto the control unit here so that the astronaut could work with his hands without worrying about the camera. Lunar cameras didn't have a viewfinder because the astronauts' helmets prevented them from looking down and framing the shot. Basically, you could just sort of point that camera at what you wanted without having to really look through a viewfinder. But according to conspiracy theorists, this was a problem that couldn't be solved. They had to focus it, set the shutter speed, set the aperture by hand, wearing armored gauntlets. You can't see the shutter button on a Hasselblad that's on the front of the camera. You didn't know if you'd taken a photograph because you can't hear anything in space. You can't see the 
the counter dial which is on the side of the camera. So with all those restrictions, we have some of the most iconic images ever taken in the 20th century. I don't believe it. I'll step out and take some of my first pictures here. Jay Windley investigated how these design features on the Hasselblad would have been operated by the astronauts. The Zeiss Biogon lens here has been fitted with these little paddles to allow the astronaut to manipulate them with clumsy fingers. You just push it in either direction. The shutter release, normally a very small button, has been made especially large so that it can be pressed with an astronaut's glove. The focus ring has been fitted with stops that correspond to near, medium, far, and infinity. So he didn't have to pay attention to whether he was eight feet or nine feet away from a subject. He wouldn't have to very carefully measure it. Richard Underwood was responsible for teaching Apollo astronauts the art of lunar photography. Even in the early days, before they went to the moon, I'd say, you know, when you get back uh, from this journey, you will be a national hero. But your photographs, I say, if they're good, they'll live forever. I tell them, your only key to immortality is the quality of your photography, nothing else. Forget all the other stuff. The astronauts were told to take their lunar cameras everywhere they went and practice. They took them home to photograph their friends and family and barbecues and sporting events and all other types of things. They knew that camera uh, very, very effectively. All of the crew members understood pretty well how to operate this. And the film uh, turned out to be very, very versatile in coming up with uh, just outstanding results. For all the effort it would take to create and hide a lie of such magnitude, it would have been far easier for NASA to build a rocket and put man on the moon.